good morning namaste i think so we'll have to electrify the room with the number of people that we have today so i'll uh, begin the presentation my thoughts on electric two wheel and three wheel industry india's net zero goals are not just a pledge they are an ambitious uh, move towards a sustainable future that we should aim as an industry just before i share my thoughts on two wheel and three wheel let's try and understand your story my story the india story 10 five out of 10 cities from india the world's most polluted cities irrespective of which city you come from here today erratic monsoons heat waves cold waves have become a part of our regular lives transportation industry accounts for almost 14% of ghg emissions two wheel and three wheel industry accounts for almost 20% of carbon dioxide and 30% of pm contribution and uh, we also have a very highly skewed energy mix today we import almost 75 to 80% of our crude oil requirements and 50% of our gas requirements now uh, and and that underlies the score uh, of why uh, electric mobility plays an important role in this transition for decarbonization having said that uh, you know we also have uh, to move towards more uh, competitiveness uh, in terms of ev uh, ecosystem uh, per se uh, in our understanding we are uh, uh, somewhere around between 0 to 40 to 50 percent of net localization as an industry today so all of these um, uh, you know challenges are well understood uh, within the industry and with the government and the, uh, whatever leap forward that we have taken with the right policies subsidies both at the center and state level have been encouraging uh, some part of the industry has uh, benefited out of it some yet to and uh, more importantly the digitalization uh, uh, you know initiatives by the government has put india on a uh, you know a global map and it is a play where it's going to iron out a lot of the ecosystem challenges that we face uh, through uh, digitalization having said that uh, India as a country is blessed with renewable resources and although uh, our energy mix has a limited uh, renewable energy focus today but going forward by 2030 with the progress we believe 40 percent looks very achievable so all those who are talking about well to wheel and really are we green I think so we have to give some more time and we'll be uh, you know certainly having more greener uh, ecosystem on that front uh, of last four or five years, uh, what we have been hearing globally and also in India, we need to be mindful of what we produce. The polluter pays, right? And we are we are paying a very hefty price for what the ice industry did for us in the last 80, 100 years. Um, as such, uh, everything that we produce has for design for environment, design for sustainability, and every ecosystem that we plan has to be from a sustainability perspective. And hence, circular economy recycling plays a very, very important role on whatever business plans that we do going forward. <laughs> Having said that, a rate of urbanization is almost moving at a 4% CAGR. Don't go by this small number of 4%, multiply that 1.4 billion uh, Indians that we have around. And, and that speaks for uh, the kind of um, aspirations that the rural India has and that translates into the per capita income which is phenomenally growing over the last two decades where we were on about $400 way back in 2000. Uh, 2014 we were on about say $1,500 uh, uh, odd dollars and today we are $2,600 and it's going to fast move to $4,000. So if we, if we look at the kind of aspirations uh, or disposable income that's going to play around uh, combined with the workforce that we envisage will be uh, almost 40 percent of those will be millennials if i may call gen z or gen alpha if i may call and those are not the guys who really want mediocre products uh, they are i would say rise of an informed customer so we should be uh, you know uh, happy with the kind of dna that we have and uh, going forward, I think so I'm very, very optimistic about the India story, your story, my story. We are going up, certainly. Now, if you had to slice and dice this uh, entire EV 
uh, industry into four aspects i think so we are we are currently experiencing uh, four areas one is some of these are in the evolutionary stage uh, speak about the localization yes a long way to go uh, the ecosystem development uh, needs to be ironed out uh, to be truly sustainable uh, growth uh, circular economy is a very very nascent stage but very important and uh, data economy is something that with the connected solutions we need to handle it much better so i think so this uh, will eventually has to move to a transformative stage and uh, i i would uh, say decarbonization efforts of government are in line uh, the pace can be debated but all uh, the legacy uh, practices um, uh, have been challenged and i think so from a uh, centrally operated uh, you know manufacturing university we are seeing uh, growth of micro factories near to the demand and that's revolutionary in a way because it cuts down a lot of these uh, unnecessary uh, logistics cost and value chain so uh, we have seen uh, uh, incredible efforts by startups in various spaces uh, including uh, you know battery tech iot telematics asset b light models so those are some innovative uh, uh you know solutions that the industry has been able to come up uh, specifically in the uh, challenges that we have highlighted in last couple of conferences and so forth uh when i talk about transformative i think so product customization is something that we are seeing uh, it's just uh, beautifully coming up i i know not of not big fans of e rickshaws and uh, you know e cargos but let me tell you it has transformed the lives of many in the bottom of the pyramid and whether we like it or not i think so these are here to say product customizations are here to stay so we will see lot more um, custom products being built on modular platforms going forward uh we are already advanced fairly well in terms of connected ecosystem a lot to do uh more importantly we we uh, we have used to buying a product and then not experiencing out of it currently we are looking at solution selling which is a very very welcome change in the industry uh i'm more worried on the uh, human resource side when we move from mechanical to electronics and software based products i think so that's an area which needs to be addressed and uh, all of this is definitely driving a lot of ideas innovations and investments thanks to uh, all those vcs and pe funded startups uh this is an interesting space yeah i mean historically all those who have spent 30 40 years in this industry would say you know 10 12 oems handful of component suppliers and you see the whole lot of uh, intermediaries have come up which are playing a very very important role uh, you know influx of new startups the bomb value is changing right we are looking at more of electronics um, and software based uh, bomb and then uh, if you see uh, on the component side the power electronics the battery the telematics energy as a service these are some of the areas that have become a very very important part of the entire value chain and uh, you know green tribunals see what's happening to delhi today uh, i think so all of these are playing a larger role so uh, on the supply side uh, the uh, you know oems uh, the legacy oems are yet to get in the uh, traction so we have tried to map uh, the tractions of where they are today green means they are very you know, on a high traction today but there is a lot of low traction activities that we need to address to really grow the ecosystem specifically on the component side we need to look at how the distribution is going to happen beyond the metros so those are the areas that we need to challenge uh, as a stakeholder and and mind you each and every stakeholder within this space has to contribute and deliver for the industry to really go forward from where we are today if i had to give you the volume game i think so there's no brainer we are at a very very low base so these volumes are expected to grow at a multifold uh, you know growth rate uh, but interestingly the two wheel has really uh, picked up uh, from uh, you know and and contributing to almost 60% of the volumes today of the entire uh, two wheel ev ecosystem if i talk about the penetration levels uh, largely driven by three wheel uh, e rickshaws Uh, but going forward i think so those are the uh, you know customers who are going to upgrade themselves to l5 m category as their 
uh, you know capability to pay for a better product uh, moves as they so it's a it's a process but i think so uh, you know look at that uh, current volume 60% of uh, two wheel evs but in terms of penetration we have a long way to go so that's an area that will define how the ev uh, ecosystem is likely to ply up going forward interestingly the uh, demand pockets are very concentrated among uh, select state what it speaks about is that we are still trying to sell uh, to b2b customers we are still trying to sell to the premium customers uh, as far as the two wheel three wheel is concerned so uh, while we are hopeful that uh, the two wheel chart is likely to spread uh, uh, you know uh, fairly well but with respect to three wheel uh, i believe with this uh, e rickshaw uh, e-card phenomena will be restricted to uh, the states that we uh, really looking at here, right from Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. So in a way, uh, there will be uh, some threshold for the future growth of uh, uh, electric uh, three wheels. I know it's a busy chart. It just speaks about uh, the opportunities that uh, exist in the entire ecosystem. It's very interesting mind-boggling number of OEMs that exist in the ecosystem today. I believe consolidations and, um, you know, I mean, acquisitions or phasing out is likely to happen. Uh, for whatever blips we had in the two-wheeler industry in last year, we saw uh, entry of uh, the legacy OEMs into the space very, very quickly. Uh, as far as the two-wheel, the Alpha N, Alpha M, we still have a lot of organized players, but look at the ERIC and ECART. Uh, the maximum share of the uh, business is 8%. It means it's, it's highly fragmented, highly localized. They're not going beyond the regional scope. They are very happy uh, in their own space. Uh, 449 OEMs, if I may say. So uh, I think so this industry is here to stay in a different format. Maybe they'll grow up with products. Maybe there's standardization coming up. But uh, if I had to give a quick glimpse on how the forecast looks like, uh, conservatively, we believe um, the three wheel will have a lesser uh, growth in, ter in terms of uh, the overall uh, TIV uh, and going at least a 2x from here where we go. And um, uh, the two wheel, we believe, uh, unless we address the e-motorcycle challenge, uh, realistically to our opinion and with the ecosystem challenges that we have, around about 5 million looks. Uh, reasonable to us. Uh, to conclude, I think so there is a potential and opportunity. Uh, the, the real key is to really uh, focus on the execution. Localization R&D, we are actually still traders. We need to really manufacture a lot more. Uh, we have to stop uh, simply copy pasting. We really need to do R&D which works for India because the products that we operate uh, use uh, are more of an Indian driven. Uh, the ecosystem, the scale-up of startups is very crucial. Uh, we need to collaborate as a public-private partnership on charging infrastructure. And I believe uh, product customizations are here to stay. And every innovation that we'll talk about reducing cost direct to customers are here to stay. No industry is going to you know, scale up unless we scale up our human resources. And I believe that's a very important point that we need to all understand and work on. Electrical electronics uh, skill sets are in dearth quality, I mean. Um, the battery technology is a new beast. We need to really earn. ELVs, half of us don't even understand how we are going to address that. And uh, you know, when the connected platform leveraging data is going to really help us uh, manage the products better. For all of those who are wondering who we are and what we are up to, so we help uh, companies in the automotive, electronics, and uh, uh, you know, plastic space to excel, transform, and grow. And uh, we have been in the business for last ten years. I come from a thirty years of electronic component manufacturing background, and last ten years of space, uh, uh, you know, we have been to uh, concept to commercial production uh, advisory that we offer. Uh, we understand the implications of proposed solutions right, as we come from shop floor. So right from uh, the boardroom to the shop floor, we are in that space that we can support. And um, uh, let's, let's looking forward for a very interactive sessions for the day. Thank you very much for your time.